Hello, Damien here from Cloud Technology Experts. In the last series of videos, we took up a website and we deployed it on Amazon EC2, on Docker containers, and then on Kubernetes. In the next series of videos, we're going to extend the work we did on Kubernetes with CICD, that is continuous integration and continuous deployment. In Kubernetes, CICD is commonly done with GitHub principles. This is where your code is stored in Git repository, and that becomes your main source of truth. GitHub has four main principles. Number one, your code has to be managed declaratively. This is what Kubernetes does. Number two, your YAML files, those declarative files, have to be managed by a versioning system, and they have to be immutable as well. Number three, those images have to be pulled down automatically by software agents. And four, your system has to be continuously reconciled which means software agents have to pull down your application and then reconcile the state with that of the cluster. So on GitHub, you have your desired state and then when those get pulled down, you have to make sure that the desired state and the current state of your cluster matches. The last two steps, that is step three and four, where images have to be pulled down automatically and then reconciled continuously are done by software agents. And this is where Flux comes in. And that is why we're going to be using Flux in this our series of labs. Flux would be the one that is continuously looking at our environment and try to reconcile the current state in the cluster with the desired state in the GitHub environment. But take note, we talk about continuous integration and continuous delivery. Why Flux takes care of continuous delivery, GitHub Actions takes care of continuous integration. GitHub has features called GitHub Actions where your code can be tested, compiled, create Docker images, and upload those Docker images to the Docker registry. So we will use GitHub Actions for our continuous integration and then use Flux for our continuous delivery. So next, we're going to take a look at the architecture of Flux and then we're going to learn how to deploy Flux and proceed with the rest of the project. So let's go to the project homepage to get it started. Okay, so here's the project page. Just like we did with the previous project, here I'm going to have everything documented on this page. So if you scroll down, you will read about the introduction that we did so far. For example, here it says, Flux is a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes that are open and extensible. So here we're going to take a look at the architecture of Flux, then we'll look at the project plan and deploy our environment. So let's start with this diagram here. So Flux is organized around controllers. So here you can see we have the source controller, we have the customized controller, and we have the help controller. The source controller is basically responsible for coordinating with the versioning system. Source controller enables you to use any versioning system, which means it is agnostic to which versioning system that you use. So you can use GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket or whatever. Source controller makes all that possible. Then when we come to Customize and Helm, these two are similar, but they do different things. Customize has been with Kubernetes for quite some time now. In fact, anytime you run kubectl-k, you're basically using Customize with the kubectl. But even if you don't use Customize with kubectl, you can use it as a standalone. So what is customize? We have a lot of YAML files to manage. Sometimes you may want to use them in different environments. For example, you may want to use them for pre-prod, staging, and then production environment. In that kind of a scenario, customize is gonna help you go into those YAML files, make some changes, add some information to make things easier for you to manage. So basically, we're going to take a look at customize on another day, but for now, we're just trying to understand the architecture of Flux. So if you come down here to Helm, usually you are either managing your environment with YAML files or you're using a package management system like Helm. Helm is similar to AppGate or YUM in Linux. And if you have used Linux before, you know that these application management tools are quite helpful. So if you're managing your applications in Kubernetes uh, with Helm, it means that you're not directly dealing with the YAML files because you have to take the time to convert your applications into what we call hem charts. And after that, you can do things like hem install and then the name of the hem chart. So as you can see here, 
If you are managing your applications with YAML files, then customize comes in. But if you are not managing them with YAML files, if you are using a package management system like Helm, then Helm comes here. Uh, but at the end of the day, both of them are helping you to create your Kubernetes resources. So whether you're using Customize or Helm, those controllers are going to help you achieve the same objective. So it doesn't matter whether you're using Customize or you're using Helm, these are still deployed in your environment anyway. So as you can see, we have three controllers here already, the Source Controller, the Customize Controller, and the Helm Controller. But there are two additional controllers. We still have the Notification Controller here, and we have the image automation controllers as well. So pretty much the notification controller can help you send notifications to your users. For example, you can connect it to Slack channel. And you can see here for the image automation, it said they work together to update a Git repository when new images are available. So with that, let's look at the project plan. In this project plan, for you to be able to follow through this project, you need to get some fundamentals out of the way. First of all, you need to be familiar with Kubernetes. This is kind of like advanced form of Kubernetes. So if you don't have a good knowledge of Kubernetes, this would be difficult for you to grasp. Then you need to have a Kubernetes cluster. This one is easy to do because there are different ways you can run a Kubernetes environment. You can run it in your laptop, and that is what I'm going to be doing in this training. Uh, when you want to run it in your laptop, there are three main tools you can use. We have something called Minikube, which is just a virtual machine with Kubernetes deployed on it. And you can just install it on your laptop. At the same time, if you want, you can use something called Kind, K-I-N-D, which means Kubernetes and Docker. That is what I'm going to be using in these labs. Kind is quite easy to set up and it works pretty well. Also, you can use something called Docker for desktop. In Docker for Desktop, you can enable Kubernetes. Once you enable Kubernetes, now you have Docker for Desktop and you have Kubernetes also in your laptop. So these are the different ways you can use Kubernetes in your laptop in a very easy way. But what if you want to use it on a proper environment? Then you can go to the cloud and use something like EKS or AKS in Azure. You can also use GKE in Google Cloud. So whichever one you want to use is up to you probably a lot easier for you to just use it on your laptop at the moment. Then after we install our Kubernetes cluster, we need to ensure that we have Flux installed and we need to also install Customize. So by plan, this is what we intend to do. We're going to set up the environment, then we're going to take time to understand Customize, take time to understand Helm and Helm charts, and then we would now start to do continuous delivery with Flux. In that, we have four main steps. Step one, we're going to learn how to do Flux Bootstrap. And then we're going to create our sources, that is connecting to a Git repository. And then we'll learn to deploy our application. And finally, we'll learn how to do continuous de uh, delivery with Flux. And after that, we'll round up. So for now, what, we, what is left for us to do now is to go ahead and deploy our environment. Take note that in my own environment, I already have cluster deployed with kind. I already have Flux installed, I already have Customize installed, and in fact, I already have Helm installed. So let me go to my laptop and show you how to do this. Please observe that these instructions I'm giving you are for the Mac laptop. If you're using Windows, the instructions will be different. If you're using Linux, the instructions will be different. But usually, these are very easy to install. So let me go ahead and show you my own environment. So here's my environment. Let's try to install Kind. I already have all the pages here bookmarked for you. So if you go to Kind, this is the website for Kind. And right here on this page, you have the installation instructions on Quick Start. For Mac, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to come here to my shell and I'm going to paste it. But like I said, I already have my Kind installed. In fact, I already have my cluster deployed. So with that, it's telling me that I already have this installed. So let me show you my cluster, kubectl get nodes. It says I have a cluster of three nodes, the controller node and two worker nodes. That will be sufficient for what I'm going to be doing in these classes. So let's go back and install our Flux. So go here to this page for Flux 
and then also on getting started you see this instruction here just copy that and install it again I'm using Mac you have to check with your operating system you're using so click on that and install it and it's going to say that I already installed it okay so it's telling me that this is already installed and if I type flux it's going to show me how to use flux so there are a lot of instructions here which can be quite useful when you're trying to get used to flux so I'm going to copy that and paste it here just to help me check that my cluster is all ready and it says prerequisites checks passed so I'm good to go now flux is deployed let's see what next customize so customize is here and if you see that is the website in installing customize you just again copy this command if you take note we've been using just one single command called brew in Mac you can install brew for Linux as well and use it if you're using Linux but in Windows you have to find out how to install all these so now it says that customize 4.5.7 is already installed so now if I type customize I see again that customize has been deployed so last we're going to deploy helm actually for helm it's not a prerequisite for you to install helm before you deploy flux or at least for flux to work you don't have to deploy helm but here let's get it deployed so I'm going to do copy this if you come here to helm.sh that will give you the, um, the instructions to install it so I come back here to my shell and I paste it brew install helm and it says that helm has been installed so if I type helm again I see that helm has been properly deployed okay and those are the things we need to set up our environment we need to have, have a kubernetes cluster we need to deploy flux because we're going to be using flux then customize and helm because we're going to be using this okay so with that my environment is properly set up and by now I hope you understand what github is all about I hope you understand flux and I hope you understand that for you to proceed with these exercises you need to make sure that you have the right environment by deploying the services that we need to use okay I hope to see you in the next video and thank you for watching